Thanks so much for joining us this evening. My name is Carlin Geyer, and I'm a member of the Washington Rebels community here in DC. This evening, we're coming together with Seth Keibel and his son Will to listen to great klezmer music and celebrate the Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah. You might remember Seth from his performance in our 2019 Christmas Rebels, Celestial Fools. We're excited that Seth is back with us this year for our virtual season of reveling and today's celebration. Simchat Torah is the Jewish holiday celebrating the end of one annual cycle of reading the Torah and the beginning of another. In Judaism, the Torah is our holy book. It's made up of the five books of Moses and the same text is also called the Old Testament in Christianity. Every synagogue has a large Torah scroll made out of leather parchment where a scribe wrote out by hand the words of the holy book. Scrolls can be very old and fragile. The one in my congregation growing up was over a hundred years old and it was smuggled out of Poland after the Holocaust. Simchat Torah is a really fun celebratory holiday. At my congregation, everyone would come to the synagogue in the evening and we'd make a noisy parade as we danced around the sanctuary seven times following the scr Torah scroll. We'd then unroll the entire scroll, standing in a big circle with each of us supporting a part. The last words of the scroll and the first words were chanted and the rabbi then carefully rolled the scroll back up to be ready for reading the reading cycle to begin again next year. Klezmer music is often part of the Simchat Torah celebrations, so we thought this would be a great time to showcase Seth Keibel and his klezmer music expertise. Klezmer is the traditional folk music of Ashkenazi Jews of Eastern Europe. Jews lived all over Eastern Europe and the Middle East, and they blended together parts of the local folk music of those areas to create a style that was uniquely Jewish. That blending continued when Jews came to America, and elements of jazz and musical theater were incorporated into klezmer too. The joyous music and dancing uh, of klezmer music is a perfect complement to a fun party holiday like Simchat Torah. Seth will tell us a lot more about the history and variety of klezmer music as he presents his concert. While you watch, please do consider donating to support this free performance and a season of reveling, either on our website or on Facebook. Now, get ready to dance, celebrate, and enjoy Simchat Torah!
wonderful introduction. Greetings, revelers. Many of you already know me. My name is Seth Keibel, and with me today is my hostage accompanist, Mr. Will Keibel. Now, a quick note about this video. This is being pre-recorded. However, my intention is to lurk in the live chat on Facebook when this airs on Sunday. In fact, I believe right now, Future Seth is going to type something witty and insightful into the comments. <laughs> Good one, Future Seth. Okay, anyhow, as Carlin mentioned, uh, klezmer music has been closely associated with the Jewish holiday of Simchas Torah uh, for at least the last few decades in the United States, and for good reason. I mean, first of all, Simchas Torah is that all too rare occurrence of a joyous uh, Jewish holiday, and there's nothing more celebratory than Eastern European Jewish klezmer music. Now, klezmer is the folk music of the Ashkenazi Eastern European Jewish communities, the kind of music that would be played at, at weddings and other types of village celebrations in the old country. It's also what happened to this music when over two and a half million Jews traveled across the Atlantic Ocean at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, and those old world sounds began to blend and mix with the sounds of the new world, stuff that was going on contemporaneously in New York, uh, early jazz, Dixieland, Tin Pan Alley, and the result in many ways is a quintessentially American form of music reflective of the Jewish immigrant melting pot experience in this country. Okay, so, so back to Simchas Torah. As, as Carlin already explained, Simchas Torah is the holiday, the point in the year when we get to the end, we read the last portion of the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, and almost immediately go back to the beginning and start reading it all over again. I mean, it's kind of like, well, here. Sort of like this. And he went on, and there was a yellow light and fire within. And the evening meal was ready, and he was expected. And Rose drew him in and set him in his chair and put little Eleanor upon his lap. He drew a deep breath. Well, I'm back, he said. When Mr. Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 11th birthday, 11th birthday, with a party of special magnificence, there was much talk and excitement in Hobbiton. You get the idea. So look, we're going to do a little more traditional klezmer for you right now. We open, by the way, with a traditional uh, bulgar freilach, uh, a lively circle dance where you do at a wedding or a, a brat mitzvah where you stick the kid in the chair and try not to hit his head on the ceiling. Uh, that one was called Odessa Bulgar, or the Bulgar from Odessa. Uh, we're gonna continue with another one with a geographic title, Kiev Bulgar, or the Bulgar from Kiev. And what I'd like you to do, you know, what we do, as I think Carlin explained on Simchas Torah, is we dance with the Torah. In between reading these portions, we dance with the Torah in celebration of this happy occasion. So what I'd like you to do right now if you would indulge me, is grab your favorite book, or a book that has special meaning, special significance for you. It could be the Bible. It could be Webster's Dictionary. It could be the Iliad. It could be Rage by Bob Woodward. It could be The Art of the Deal by that other guy. Anyway, just grab that book, and while we're playing the song, dance around the room with it. Send photos or it didn't happen. Okay. Key ever bold. Thank you. 
anonymous or anonymous scene. Anyway, the next song we're going to do is a little more modern. This song is only about 80 years old, uh, close to 90 years old. Uh, but it's a song that I think is appropriate for my dear reveler friends because it comes out of the theater tradition. Uh, in particular, the Yiddish theater on 2nd Avenue in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Now this song uh, has a very peculiar history, and I'm not going to give you the full story right now. That would take too much time. And besides, that's what Google was invented for. But I'll give you the short version. This song originates in the Yiddish theater, 2nd Avenue in Manhattan, 1932, written by the great composer of the Yiddish theater, Sholem Sekunda. Uh, in attendance at a performance of the Yiddish theater, uh, at one of the shows where this song is sung, is a black vaudeville duo named Johnny and George. Now, Johnny and George like to go to the Yiddish theater. They find it entertaining. Actually, they have an ulterior motive. As you well know, when you're in vaudeville, you need a bit of shtick. Well, part of their shtick was they like to learn songs in lots of different languages, not unlike Miss Betsy Falter. See what I did there? A little yeah. reveler thing. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. They decided they need to learn a song in Yiddish. So they decided, this is the song, so this black duo uh, learns the song all in Yiddish. Now they perform all over, but one of their most frequent venues is the Apollo Theater in Harlem. So now, 1936, they're performing this song at the Apollo Theater in Harlem for a mostly black audience, but who else is in the audience? The white Jewish Tin Pan Alley songwriter Tin Pan, uh, from Tin Pan Alley. Thank you. Sammy Kahn. And Sammy Kahn hears this song. Says, Oi, where did that come from? Talk to Johnny and George. They direct them Shalom, to Shalom Secunda down in the Yiddish Theater District. He purchases the rights to this song for a sum of $50. Uh, at this point in time, Sammy Kahn wears many hats in the music business, but one of those hats is he works as an A&R man, artist and repertoire, record producer for Decca Records. And he's been charged with producing a trio of as of yet unknown singing sisters, not Jewish, from Minnesota with the last name, I'm sorry, Wisconsin, same difference, with the last name of Andrews, the Andrews sisters. And the song, of course, as you might have guessed, is The Bear Miss the Train. No, that's not right. No, no. Another beer, Mr. Shane. Closer. Closer, thank you. No, by Mir Bistu Shane. And this song will be recorded by the Andrew Sisters in November 1937 and will go to on to be the biggest selling song in recorded music history up until that day. So, just to review, Sholem Secunda, Yiddish Theater, 2nd Avenue, Johnny and George, Apollo Theater, Harlem, Sammy Kahn, Andrew Sisters, Decca Records, Seth and Will Keibel, Washington Records.
first song before we turn things back over to Carlin. Uh, but before we do, let me say a couple of things. First of all, once again, a big round of virtual applause, if you will, for Mr. Will Kyle. He does a fabulous job accompanying me. He has little choice in the matter, but I know that revelers are big fans of child labor to begin with. <laughs> okay, I'd like to, of course, thank everyone at Revels, Colin Billis, Betsy Fulford, everyone uh, who facilitated this and invited me to participate in this event. And I really look forward to seeing everyone again in the not too distant future within spitting distance. Okay, uh, we're gonna conclude with another kind of rip-roaring, traditional uh, klezmer tune. And this is entitled De Hacer Bulgar, or The Hot Bulgar. Thank you so much for listening.
again! I hope you enjoyed Seth and Will's performance. The Washington Revels community is so glad that we can keep sharing traditions with you through a season of reveling and virtual events like today's Simchat Torah concert. Presenting our fall series takes a community of Revels volunteers, performers, and staff, as well as professional artists like Seth. And especially during a pandemic, our community needs your support. Donations help us to provide sorely needed income to guest artists and to produce the virtual programming that is connecting us now when we need it the very most. Your contribution will also help sustain Washington Rebels through the uncertain times ahead so that we can be here for you when it's safe to be reveling again in person. Please donate by visiting our website or through our Facebook fundraiser. Thank you for supporting a season of reveling. We can't wait to see you at our next event.